Hi, it's Kristen May. Welcome to a fun filled Friday. Today we are going to be talking about recycling, specifically recycling paper. Now I hope that all of you have heard the phrase reduce, reuse, recycle. If you notice in that phrase, recycle is always said last. That is because it is much more important to reduce and to reuse. Reducing how much waste we produce should be our very first priority. Recycling, though better than just throwing things away, still uses a lot of energy and resources. Many times recycled materials have to be transported long distances, even overseas. And this transportation uses fuel and releases pollution into the air. So although I do still want you to recycle, each and every time you go to recycle something or to throw something away, I want you to think to yourself, could I reuse this? Could I do something differently where I didn't have to produce this piece of trash in the first place? Little actions that you can take to produce less trash can add up to make big positive impacts. As humans, we sadly throw away a lot of things. The EPA estimates that the average American produces 2,000 pounds of trash every single year. So the amount of trash that you produce every single year weighs about the same as a full-grown great white shark. If a family of four were to collect all their trash and weigh it at the end of the year, it would probably be about the same weight as a female African elephant. That's a whole lot of trash. About 80% of all of our trash could be recycled. However, our recycling rate hovers around 28%. This means that over half of all of the trash in our landfills could have been recycled. With paper alone, each American uses an average of about 650 pounds a year. And where does all this paper come from? Well, it comes from trees. If just four people recycled most of the paper that they used in a year, they would save over 20 trees. And recycling paper doesn't just save trees. For each ton or 2,000 pounds of paper made from recycled materials instead of raw tree material, we also save three cubic yards of landfill space, 4,000 kilowatts of energy, 380 gallons of oil, 60 pounds of air pollution, and 7,000 gallons of water. So do your part by using less paper paper, buying paper made from recycled materials, and recycling paper when you're done using it. Just think about all of the trees, water, space, and clean air you are saving just by recycling paper. Reducing, reusing, and recycling paper really can make a difference. The more that paper is recycled, the less strong its paper fibers become. So many products have to be made up of a mixture of recycled paper and wood from trees. The wood increases the strength of the paper fibers. Many of the products I bet you use almost every single day are made up of a combination of wood and recycled paper. Things like tissues, cardboard, newspaper, toilet paper, cereal boxes, and even just regular paper. Think about all of the different things that your piece of recycled paper could be turned into. It may even be turned into a pair of earrings. These earrings, believe it or not, were made out of a cereal box. Since we are talking about recycling paper and what recycled paper could be made into, how about we make some recycled paper ourselves? I think that means we need to head to the lab because it's time for an experiment. Paper plants have a specific process on how they make recycled paper. We are going to mimic that same process, but on a much smaller scale. We're just going to make a really small disc of recycled paper. You can make your own paper at home by following along. Written instructions will be posted for free download on our Google Drive. The link should be in the video description below. 100% recycled paper products are made completely out of paper that people like you have decided to 
dangerous cycle. No trees are used at all. The first thing that is done at paper plants is a paper pulp is made out of mixing the recycled paper and a lot of water. The paper and water are mixed together in this kind of giant blender to make kind of a paper soup or paper pulp. To mimic this at home, we are going to use toilet paper as our recycled paper. I'm gonna use about five squares. I'm going to tear it up a little bit and then put it in a jar with some water. And then I'm gonna stir it up to make our own paper pulp. So our paper pulp is ready to go. Next, in a paper plant, their paper pulp is washed and refined to remove things like staples, plastic, and any other non-paper material that may have been mixed in when the paper was recycled. We don't need to clean and refine our paper pulp because we know that all of our material is paper fiber. After being washed and refined at the factory, the clean paper pulp is then moved through a series of screens to drain the water away from the paper pulp or the paper slurry. Kind of like when you're cooking spaghetti and you pour noodles into a colander to let all the water drain out. To simulate this process, we have a small rectangle of hardware cloth screen that we are going to pour our paper pulp onto. If you don't have a screen like this at home, you can use a piece of an old t-shirt instead. So we're going to drain our paper slurry into a glass lie our screen on top of the glass. I wanna make my recycled paper into the shape of a circle. So I'm gonna use an empty can, kind of like a stencil. You can also use a cookie cutter in whatever funky shape you wanna to try to make your paper into. I'm gonna lay my stencil on top of the screen. The screen is going to filter out our water from our paper fibers and the cup will catch the water. So we wanna dump our entire paper slurry all at once onto our screen. I already see the water starting to filter out. At the paper plant, after the water has drained away from the paper pulp or the paper slurry, what remains are paper fibers, and those fibers are pressed against giant rollers to keep squeezing out the water that is left. To simulate this, we are going to fold our screen in half, over our disc and move it onto a piece of newspaper. And then we are going to take our can and this will simulate one of those giant rollers at the paper plant. And we're gonna roll our paper fibers to try to squeeze out some excess water and also to flatten it more into a paper shape. Sometimes it's helpful to fold the piece of paper over your disc so it soaks up even more of that water. At the paper plant, once the big sheets of paper have been rolled, they still need time to dry out completely. So we need to let our rolled out paper dry at least overnight. If you come back after leaving it out overnight and it's still a little damp, make sure you let it dry completely. So we are going to allow our paper disc to dry overnight and then come back and see if we successfully made toilet paper into a new tiny piece of recycled paper we can write on. See you tomorrow! All right, let's see if we made paper out of toilet paper. Look at this! A little thin disc of recycled paper and we made that out of just five sheets of toilet paper. So we successfully made a piece of recycled paper. I'm gonna write a special message on it for you guys. If you were able to make your own piece of paper, how about you write a message for your mom, your dad, a friend, or someone else to help brighten their day? Well, I hope you learned a lot and maybe even had a little bit of fun. Think about how you can take what you learned from this video to make positive impacts on our environment. Hope to see you next time. Stay wild.